During the darkest hours of World War II, there emerged a remarkable aircraft that defied all odds while engaging in battles on the high seas. An unsung champion of the skies, the flying boats of the Pacific Theater accomplished the impossible, hunting enemy submarines beneath the treacherous waves and braving the roughest waters to land in the most inhospitable environments. Among them all, one beast reigned supreme, the formidable Japanese Kawanishi H-8K, hailed by historian René Francillon as, quote, the most outstanding water-based combat aircraft of the Second World War. As the war's largest and most fearsome flying boat, the H-8K struck terror into the hearts of Allied pilots. However, the true genius of the aeronautical marvel lay in its staggering range, a feature that would be pushed to its limit in March 1942, when the massive flying boats were tasked with traveling thousands of miles to deliver a second crushing blow to U.S. forces in Pearl Harbor. The Empire's Winged Boats Long before World War I erupted, military factions around the world had already harnessed the power of flying boats and float planes for coastal reconnaissance and naval rescue operations. Their uncanny ability to land in virtually any body of water granted them unparalleled versatility, making them indispensable assets for major military powers. In a quest to match the capabilities of Western superpowers, Japan feverishly advanced its aeronautical technology. The island nation's early forays into float planes included the Yokosuka Rogo Kogata reconnaissance float plane developed during World War I, and the more robust single-engine Yokosuka E-1Y biplane, which served the Japanese Navy from 1925 to 1932. As the 1930s dawned and the Imperial Navy readied for Japan's expansionist campaigns, Japanese engineers turned to the West for inspiration in crafting a new generation of float planes. They found their muse in the British Short Rangoon. Borrowing from the Rangoon design, the Kawanishi Aircraft Company produced a license-built and large version of the flying boat in 1930, naming it the Kawanishi H-3K. The aircraft's astounding performance delighted the Japanese, who quickly began designing advanced iterations of the H-3K. In response to the Navy's urgent demands, the Kawanishi H-6K emerged as a testament to Japan's ability to create modern aircraft capable of rivaling Western warplanes. The seasoned team at Kawanishi designed a larger, more powerful flying boat, better suited for long-range operations. The H-6K, dubbed the Type S by its creators, was a colossal four-engine monoplane enhanced with twin tails and a hull suspended beneath a parasol wing. On July 14, 1936, the first of these fantastic machines took to the sky, with 217 eventually being built. Yet, as the H-6K embarked on its maiden flight, Kawanishi's ambitious engineers envisioned an even more massive and powerful flying boat. Fueled by the need to cover vast expanses of the Pacific Ocean, Kawanishi took the principles gleaned from British engineers and pushed them to their absolute limits, setting their sights on crafting the epitome of flying boat technology in World War II, an airborne titan that would not only dominate Japan's fleet, but potentially become the largest and most powerful flying boat in the world. Enter Emily. The United States achieved great success in its island hopping campaign in the Pacific during World War II, thanks to superior intelligence, well-coordinated joint operations, and the bravery of the U.S. Marines. As a result, the PBY Catalina is now widely recognized as the most distinguished and successful flying boat of the conflict. However, despite its indisputable feats, Catalina pales in comparison to the sheer power, range, and size of the Kawanishi H-8K. This fearsome behemoth dwarfed its contemporaries, including the British short S-25 Sunderland and the Sikorsky XPBS-1 patrol bomber. Codenamed Emily by the Allies, the all-metal four-engine H-8K was the Imperial Japanese Navy's crowning achievement in flying boat technology. Tasked with surpassing the capabilities of the Kawanishi H-6K, the H-8K exceeded every expectation, with a top speed of 290 miles per hour, a range of 4,444 miles, and a daunting arsenal of weapons. The Japanese Navy's 1938 specifications were severe, 
demanding a top speed of 276 miles per hour, a cruising speed of 207 miles per hour, and an overwhelming maximum range of 5,180 miles. Ordered in 1938, just as the Kawanishi H6K entered service, the H8K took flight for the first time in January 1941, with a total of 167 units eventually built. Japan's Engineering Triumph The H8K's initial armaments featured three 7.7mm machine guns in the ventral position and side hatches, along with five 20mm cannons in the nose, tail, dorsal, and waist blisters. The H8K-1 and H8K-2 models boasted modified armaments and employed a Mark VI air-to-surface vessel radar system for submarine detection. The H8K's design and firepower made it a formidable adversary, terrorizing American submarines throughout the war. Nestled just forward of a cantilever wing, its high cockpit housed four 1,530 horsepower Mitsubishi MK4A Kase 11 engines, while the H8K2 model featured four 1,850 horsepower Kase 22 engines with water injection, driving four blade propellers. With eight small fuel tanks in the wings and six large, partially self sealing fuel tanks in the hull, the H8K had a fuel capacity of 4,500 gallons and its unique fuel recovery feature allowed fuel from pierced hull tanks to drain into the bilge and be pumped back into undamaged tanks. Though often hindered by the Japanese military's limitations, the H-8K had the potential to excel in a wide range of patrol, reconnaissance, bombing, and transport missions. Its spacious hull could accommodate 4,400 pounds of bombs or depth charges, or up to 64 soldiers, making it an invaluable asset in troop transport. The Kawanishi H-8K's formidable presence in the Pacific Theater is a testament to Japan's engineering prowess and the aircraft's indomitable spirit. Its unmatched power, range, and size made it the king of the flying boats of World War II. Into the fray. Although Japan produced some truly superior designs in the early stages of the war, such as the Mitsubishi Zero and the H-8K, the country lacked the capabilities to sustain a prolonged military conflict in the Pacific. The technological marvels they produced were not built at the numbers and rates the Empire needed to keep the Allies at bay. The H-8K suffered from Japan's broader situation, with it never being produced in large enough numbers or deployed quickly enough to change the tide of the war. Nevertheless, the massive flying boat managed to demonstrate its impressive capabilities in many of the missions in which it was involved. The H-8K's baptism by fire occurred on March 4, 1942, during Japan's daring second raid on Pearl Harbor. Constrained by naval support and the lack of bases close to Hawaii, Japan had to plan the longest unescorted bombing sortie ever conceived to achieve its ambitious goal. The Kawanishi H-8K, a recently introduced flying boat, was the only warplane capable of making the over 3,000-mile journey. Japan had initially planned for at least four H-8Ks to participate in the assault. The bomb-laden flying boats would reach the American naval base, gather intelligence on the status of repair and salvage operations following the surprise attack, and then unleash their payloads to disrupt the efforts. However, by the time the mission was approved, only two H-8Ks were available, and the scope of the sortie was reduced. The two planes departed from Watje Atoll in the Marshall Islands and refueled at the French frigate Shoals before reaching Hawaii. A series of peculiar events and obstacles, ranging from cloud cover to poor Japanese communication and misidentification of targets, resulted in the raid inflicting no significant damage or American casualties. A mere six days after the second Pearl Harbor raid, one of the same H-8Ks embarked on a daring daylight photo reconnaissance mission over Midway Atoll. However, the powerful flying boat was intercepted by radar-directed Brewster F-2A Buffalo fighters of Marine Fighting Squadron 221. Outnumbered and with little room for maneuvering, the ensuing aerial combat led to Emily's destruction, with all aboard perishing, including lead pilot Lieutenant Hashizume Hisao. Fate The improved H-8K-2 was undoubtedly one of the most formidable opponents faced by the Allies in the Pacific. 
Between 1943 and 1945, a total of 112 H-8K-2s were constructed, each equipped with ASV radar that would contribute to the sinking of at least three American submarines north of the Philippines during the last year and a half of the war. As the versatile H-8K-2s soared through the skies, 36 H-8K-2L boats were built in the final two years of the war. These aircraft were designed explicitly as naval staff and troop transports, accommodating 29 staff passengers or 64 fully armed troops. However, Japan's war situation quickly deteriorated, prompting a shift in production priorities toward home defense fighters. Consequently, flying boat production, including the H-8K series, declined in 1945. Despite the challenges and dwindling support, the remaining H-8K-2s continued to serve in various capacities, patrol, reconnaissance, bombing, and transport missions. And although they never reached their full potential due to the precarious state of the Japanese military, these versatile and formidable aircraft earned the respect of their enemies. As the once powerful Japanese Empire unraveled, a mere four of these airborne giants remained, bearing witness to the fleeting prowess of what had briefly been the most capable flying boat of World War II. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. For even more fascinating naval warships and the grueling fights where they took part, tap your screen and delve into all of our Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned, we're always adding new videos to our collection.